first scrimmage, I remember I was watching Casablanca for the first time, and it was about 3.30 a.m. I laid in bed, slowly fading away, when I heard my cell ring. It was Kobe. I nervously picked up. Hey, uh, Rob, I hope I'm not disturbing anything, right? Uh, no. Well, what's up, Kobe? Just wondering if you could help me out with some conditioning work. That's all. I checked my clock. 4.15 a.m. Yeah, sure, I'll, I'll see you in the facility in a few minutes. It took me about 20 minutes to get my gear and out of the hotel. When I arrived and opened the door to the main practice floor, I saw Kobe, alone. He was drenched in sweat as if he had just taken a swim. It wasn't even 5 a.m. We did some conditioning work for the next hour and 15 minutes. Then we entered the weight room where he would do a multitude of strength training exercises for the next 45 minutes. After that, we parted ways and he went back to the practice floor to shoot. I went back to the hotel and crashed. Wow. I was expected to be at the floor again at about 11 a.m. I woke up feeling sleepy, drowsy, and pretty much every side effect of sleep deprivation. Thanks, Kobe. I had a bagel and headed to the practice facility. This next part I remember very vividly. All the Team USA players were there, feeling good for the first scrimmage. LeBron was talking to Carmelo, if I remember correctly, and Coach Krzyzewski was trying to explain something to Kevin Durant. On the right side of the practice facility was Kobe, by himself, shooting jumpers. And this is how our conversation went. I went over to him, patted him on the back, and said, Good work this morning. Huh? Like the conditioning. Good work. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Rob. I really appreciate it. So, when did you finish? Finish what? Getting your shots up. What time did you leave the facility? Oh, I finished, well, just now. I wanted 800 makes, so yeah, just now. My jaw dropped. He had been at the facility from 4 a.m. to 11 a.m. on the day of our first scrimmage. Every story about his dedication, every quote that he said about hard work, all came together and hit me like a train. Alright, oh, praise on to by Shimmy Osai, double honesty, apostles of GMS. Only she brothers that be pushing this truth and sincerity. Alright, I basically wanted to do a video about being comfortable, and I was going to title it, um, you know, comfort is a destructive thing, but the spirit had to go down another way. And really, this lines up more with um, the video that the elder apostle uh, Taha had done uh, with uh, regards to lukewarm brothers. Yahabashi I ain't a, a lukewarm brother, and if I am, you know, the more size quickens my spirit to where, you know, you know, the work be pushed up there. But with all that said, not to take any way anything away from 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 elder to the apostle Adar, because pretty much elder apostle Taha, because pretty much. You know everything was said in the video um and you know if, if it were possible to add then you know hopefully this will be an an addition to that and what i'd um stumbled upon is this is this video man you know when i grew up i, I used to like you know the sport of basketball and you know you you, you do you know you know how it is you grow up you play and and, and and it is what it is okay but what always fascinated me was this so-called you know, and these people look at this man as as he's some, you know, some some god or anything. In, in the fact of the matter is, you know, he's just a man, okay. But the men of the Lord, as touching the worth ethic, this man's putting you. You're supposed to be really. You're supposed to be matching that man, okay. You know, as you've heard from the courts from before, man, your jaw should have dropped. Now he did that just to put a fucking basketball in a hoop, man. Now, I remember I was speaking to a brother about this. He put he put all of this work in, all right, for just to put a basketball in a hoop, man. Now the glory that the Most High is gonna give his men, he's gonna exceed that. The stuff saith the scriptures, man. And that's why you're supposed to go for the uncorruptible crown, because he did all of this to co obtain the corruptible crown. Okay, what's this gonna mean in the day of judgment, man? It ain't gonna mean a damn thing. Okay, all right. But you're supposed to be putting that work in. All right, and you see, and that's worth it. That's supposed to make you think, man, damn, I, I, I ain't pushing enough, man. I'm not working hard enough. Okay, 
that should be the, the, the measure. And that's really like a worldly measure because brothers, some brothers might tell you, look, that's actually not enough, man. You gotta sleep, dream, and, 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 and you know, quote unquote shit, whatever. This truth, man, your whole life, your whole being is gonna be about this truth. And I believe the Apostle Taha had done, had made a statement about that, that everything, whether it is eating food, whether it, you know, you're how you're dealing with women, whether you, how you know, whatever, man, it's all going to be filtered through through these scriptures, man. Okay, you literally have to be about this thing. You, there's no Saturday you come to the camp and then on Sunday you relax, you relax off. Really, <laughs> in some kind of way, you really kind of want to relax around brothers and then be tightened up during the week because if you if you do it that way, I mean, you ain't supposed to be relaxed anyway. But if you do it that way, at the very least, brothers gonna pick you up on when you slip up. But when you're on your own, man, oh man, you wanna really be, you wanna be super, you wanna be super tight, man. You wanna be super tight just to make sure that you ain't, you know, you are meeting your your core, man. You're meeting your measures, man. So I'll end up a few scriptures. Hopefully that's gonna be a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, link in with all of those statements that I had done made. I'm not gonna draw this out too long. Like I said, if it were possible to add on to what was said, then hopefully this will be an addition. Um, and you know i'll just uh, uh you know get through these scriptures so the first scripture i've got the, is the book of first john 2 and 15 and it says love not the world neither the things that are in now when you see this and I, like like again like i said this is just for putting a fucking orange bowl inside of a fucking net okay this ain't nothing in comparison to what your heart by shimmy outside is offering us it ain't nobody actually even asking you to work that hard man okay because for the most part, you're just going to burn yourself out. Now, you got brothers that got that worth, I think, like that. Okay? This is all about being the very best version of yourself. And I like to say that a lot because everyone's got different potentials, man. Like the elders say, there's levels to these things, man. Okay? There's a, there's, everybody's got a, a, their maximum potential. Now, the question is, are you reaching your maximum potential? And really, you're the only person that knows that. <laughs> That's the fucked up thing about it. Here it is. You're going to have it to where the most size going to call you up. It's going to draw up all the works that you did. And you're going to know in that day whether you worked hard enough or not. Okay? And that's why the scriptures talk about how how, how Esau is weary, the saints. Because you got to do this and you got to work for Esau and you got to do this. You do, get worn, you do get worn out, man. You do get worn out. But then that's why the elders go into the herbs and, on, and so on and so forth. So we can be just that much more upon edge. Which goes to show you're supposed to be eating right, man. Okay? To give you that extra edge to put that into this truth. Which is another thing, man. Okay, like this man will put his 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 energy into certain food and all of that, so he can get that return back from the earth and that. Okay, so to, to the to the, all of that stuff that the Lord had, had set forth to give you a, a, a certain spirit, so he can do certain things. He'll do that. How much more so for this truth, man, to obtain that incorruptible crown? Okay, so it says, love not the world, of which with all of this money that this dude had, and you just heard that. He, that don't sound like a dude that's in love with the world, man. How much more so the prophets, the men of the Lord, and the people that claim to be, you know, that's the wrong way of putting it, but the people that hope to be the men of the Lord. How much more so, man? Okay. All right, it says, and neither the things that are in the world, for if any man love the world, the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And hey, hey look, I, I fall victim to it. I'm, you know, I'd like to keep it real, man. I'm not, I'm not a dude that's going to try front and be, you know, over righteous and oh, I'm this and that. You brothers should do it. Look, I'm I'm fucked up just like everybody else, man. Okay, just because you do a video and the most I put the spirit upon you to do the video, and that's the thing about the men of the Lord. We get on guys so much. Okay, they get offended that it's just men that's doing it. This is spirit. Yeah, how about Shimmy how side that's got it going out there like that, man? Okay, that's why the scripture talks about how he's gonna put his words within our mouths, man. Okay, don't because our righteousness is as filthy rags, man. Okay, so this is not an exhortation to be like somebody or this, that, and the third. This is the uh, exhortation to be the fullest of the spirit, to fulfill your spirit and to fulfill your lot that Yahweh Bashim Yahshua has given you. And only you know that. <laughs> only you know that. <laughs> now, like, granted, you're going to have some downtime. Even Yahweh when he was on the scene, he'd like to go down to the Garden of Gethsemane and meditate upon things. All right, downtime ain't always doing something crazy, man. Downtown just be could be just some reflection, man. And Elder Gabar always talks about reflection, you know, especially of one's character. Alright. So let me move on to the next scripture. And, and this is talking about, you know, that worth ethic, man, because you get sharp, others both get sharp, man. Okay? So how how you know the elders got you know 
go to the level that they they're with they're now passing that down onto the other brothers so iron sharpen sharpen if iron and you get into where you know a brother will get into a certain facet of of the knowledge that's not to to be envious of that brother or anything like that when that demon comes you really gotta pray to the most he removes it because that's how contention come about okay but when you see that happening that's really supposed to spark your spirit to where you're like look he's getting down with that i gotta get down with that i gotta learn that okay and if, if the most ain't really revealing it to you like that, maybe, you know, maybe work on something else and then come back to it in the la later on in the future, man. Okay? Because not, not all, you know, not everything's going to be for everybody, man. Okay? You can learn it, you can retain it, but some brothers just going to be good at certain things, man. Okay? That's why the scripture talks about a diversity of spirits. So it says, if any man, uh, it says, iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friends. Because what? Because when you get into these scriptures, man, it changes your countenance, man. All right? So you're getting deep in this thing. You see a brother's kind of look. You, see, you know, you, the deeper you go in, the whole unit gets tight, man. And I've seen that for a time when certain brothers go heavy for this thing. You know, it sparks your fit spirit out, man. Okay? You're like, man, damn, I'm not I'm not working hard enough, man. So you you push more. <laughs> okay? And that's a beautiful thing. Like, and, and, and the way that the Lord's got it happening to it. Man, we're in, you know, the year that we're in, man, the year of the push, and you keep seeing all kind of videos being pushed out there, man. Okay? Everybody's countenance is is, is is being sharpened, man. Everyone's on, really, everybody, really, everyone in GMS, you know, I, you know, I ain't looking at anybody saying, you know, for the, for, for the most part, I would say everybody's on, you know, I, I wouldn't say everybody's on point, because that would go against what the elders, was, you know, had said, but for the most part, the brothers are, you know, most brothers are on their game, man. Okay? Not saying that they're achieving their full potential or anything like that, because you can always go deeper in this thing, man. Alright? So let me move on to this scripture. And I like this this particular statement that's made here, because that, that really links up to what you're hearing here, because what you're seeing there is absolute, that's absolutely madness, man. But see, that's how we got to be about this truth, man. They got to see, man, man, damn. He's too, man, that's, that's too much, man. What you're talking about every single day that dude's in his scriptures, man. He's dealing with things pertaining to the scriptures. That's ridiculous. And that's what that's what they're going to see. And that's what the scripture says. That we fools account of his life madness and his end without honor. Because you're in that scriptures, man. Oh, he ain't going to get that, that, that car. He ain't going to get that house. He's always in them scriptures. He ain't got no ambition, man. Our ambition is to obtain that incorruptible crown, man. All right. And then it goes on to say, how is he numbered amongst the, the children of the Most High? But this, look, he says, this, we counted them for madness. Now, are they going to count your life for madness if you're persistently out there? you dig, you know, hanging around with these worldly motherfuckers and all of that, man. Nah, man. But it's going to be, it's, it, look, it's complete madness on a Saturday to just be reading the Bible for four or five hours. And then go home and study some more scriptures. That's that's madness in this world, man. That's absolute madness, but guess what? That's what the most I requires, man. And really, I'll say this, man. You know, you might be just coming into this thing. After a while, you learn to love it. <laughs> you learn to love it, man. Okay? You might be in a situation like I'm myself, for instance. I used to, you know, holidays. Oh, man. You get two weeks off, you just do some bullshit, man. All right? But the most I'll put that hell upon you so you can't really enjoy that bullshit. So you feel some type of way about that for a long time. But now... Hey, man, that time comes, you get into the scriptures, man, and you fucking love it, man. You get into the facets of, of, of the scriptures that you don't really get to because of time and all of that. You know, in topics, topical topical, um, topical uh, uh, things within the scriptures, like the history. And you can go through history systematically, break, you know, watching the breakdowns from the elders and all of that, man. All right, because you can watch the prophecies and all of that during, the, you know, during working time and so on and so forth. But really get to get thorough on a topic, you really got to have, you know, a couple of days off, man. All right, and then you learn to love it after a while, <laughs> which is heavy because the apostles are always pushed that. But you know, in the back of your mind, you don't really believe that because that seems like what it says here. Yeah, it sounds like madness. Here he is, you're gonna have two weeks off, whatever. You're just gonna get into the scriptures, man. But the Most High requires that, man. And the Most High, you know, the Most High likes that. Man. Okay, and doing that sharpens the whole unit. Going back onto what this scripture says here: yeah, Iron sharpeneth iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. All right. So, um, I like this scripture as well. This is um, Proverbs 20 and 4. It says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of cold. And cold, could, it's not just cold. It's any excuse, man. Because cold is, you know, the excuse used there. And that's the ex excuse used by most 
uh, uh, them uh, effeminate dudes out there, okay? Talking about the cold, man. You you talking about the cold? You ain't a real man, okay? Now I guess you know if it's unreasonable, it's unreasonable. But just you know, just a bit, of, a bit of snow. Come on, man. That's ridiculous, man. Okay, it says therefore shall he beg in the harvest and have nothing, man. Okay, and I'll finish up with this scripture. It's lucky if I've dragged this out a bit too longer than than you know where I really uh, should have had it, but um, and, and, you know, so lucky for any shortfalls in how you know how I might may uh, phrase certain things that you know this, this is not to uh, offend anybody or anything like that. It's just a, a something I was thinking about um, when I had watched this and and I'd watched what the elder apostle had. Um, had uh, had uh, posted okay it says therefore endure hardness as a good soldier all right of your house mashiach okay so you're supposed to endure that man okay endure it and then you know like i said after a while you you actually start liking it you start loving it man right you start you know you, you, you start enjoying enjoying all facets of this thing the hell you know sometimes you get a little break and whatnot you know how the most side will line up certain things to happen in your life and you know at the, at the beginning you might consider it hell but at the end you really consider it blessing man and the most side works like that man okay and that's why it says enjoy because that enjoy really is synonymous with patience because that patience oh you wait a, few, a while and you see all kind of you know beautiful things manifesting man it's a beautiful thing man so there's no man that war with entangleth so when you are at war of which the scripture says this is a spiritual war it says no man that war, so no one that, that's fighting the spiritual battle should be entangling himself with the affairs of life. That he may please, that he should what? Alright, so if you're willing to please the, the him that who hath chosen him to be a soldier, right, you really can't be entangled with these different things. Now, I would hope the most I will have it to where you can, you know, you can move in and out like Neo and, uh, 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 and, and Superman, okay, but there's no guarantee to that okay there's no guarantee that you're gonna be able to do that there's no guarantee that 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 that's gonna be uh, um, the facet of life that the most side has chosen for you all right so really you're just gonna endure whatever's happening you're gonna, yeah, like I said that word is synonymous with, with patience man so you know hopefully that was of edification like I said I wasn't doing it to the intent of offending anybody or anything like that um, I'm a bit you know brushed with my words so hopefully that's I didn't I didn't come across uh, um, offensive or anything like that and hopefully like I said it was off edification okay so with that I'm going to say all praise unto you how about assuming outside double honesty apostles of GMS honesty buffers will be pushing this truth in sincerity shallow one